Okay, so yan. Uh, let's start the chapter 4 discussion. So, for the first part of chapter 4, and today, we will cover the basic understanding of chemical reactions, how to write chemical equations, and how to balance some of the basic chemical equations. Now. And then, for Friday, discussion natin, focus tayo sa stoichiometry, yung calculations. Okay? So, let's focus first on the types of chemical reaction. No? So, chemical reactions occur in our daily lives. No? Lahat ng mga nangyayari sa paligid, may chemical reaction yan. Of one example would be, kapag tayo, nagluluto tayo ng samyang o kaya ng bansit canton, what, what happens? No? Yung, yung gas, no? pag binuksan nyo yung kalan, lumiliyab, di ba? So, that is a form of chemical reaction no? that is actually called the combustion reaction. Ano pa yung mga iba't ibang uri ng chemical reaction? Uh, kunwari, may suka ka, tas baking soda, pag pinaghalo mo yun, bubula yun, di ba? So, that is also a chemical reaction. Even our life, no, we are governed by our existence uh, our existence is con uh, is governed by chemical reactions because if chemical reaction ceases to exist hindi tayo mabubuhay no? so our body does lots of chemical reactions no one example would be the metabolism the and uh, the glycolysis krebs cycle electron transport chain so yun a series of chemical reaction that allow us to live no kasi without them dead style okay so ganun ka important yung understanding ng chemical reaction because by understanding chemical reaction we can predict what will happen and also pwede din natin malaman kung ano yung mga pwedeng effects ng chemical reaction sa isang tao no? so for example kunare mag major kayo sa clinical chemistry magfo-focus kayo on the biochemical reactions and its ano effect on, uh, let's say, behavior, psychology, na. So, darating din kayo sa time na ganun. So, for now, kuha muna tayo ng ba basic understanding ng chemical reactions. Okay? So, bakit ba may chemical reactions, na? Okay? So, one reason is para mag-continue yung ano, para para may products tayo mabuo, na. So, ginagawa natin itong mga chemical reactions so we can achieve what we desire to get, na. Okay? So, yun. And chemical reactions are governed by the law of conservation of mass, na. So, ibig sabihin, whatever the mass of reactants are, yun din yung mass ng products, na, after the end of the reaction. Okay, so ganun. So again, chemical reactions are governed by the law of conservation of mass. Now, it states that the mass of the matter is neither created nor destroyed. Rather, they are uh, ano lang, converted from one form to another. Okay, so yan. So, ito yung mga basic types of chemical reaction. Okay? So, ito gagawin natin, kakabisaduhin lang natin yung formats nila. No? So, for general chemistry, here are some of the basic uh, types of reaction. The first type of reaction is the combination reaction. So, what happens in combination reaction is that you have your two different species. No? So, let's say you have a compound A and B. So, what happens is that they will combine to produce the product, okay? So, again, an format ng combination reaction? You have A and B, chemical A, chemical B. Then, as the reaction proceeds, they combine. No? So, magsasama sila to form the product natin. Okay? So, ano yung pattern dito? A plus B producing AB, okay? So, magkadikit yung A pati yung B, Okay? So here are some of the uh, here are some of the reactions under the combination reaction. So suppose we will I uh, know we will combine calcium and sulfate uh, sulfate atoms, okay? Uh, sulfur atoms. So calcium and sulfur atoms they will produce calcium sulfide. Nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas when you combine them in correct proportions you will get ammonia. 
or NH3. Sodium plus oxygen gas, they will produce uh, sodium peroxide. No? Pwede rin naman sodium oxide. Okay. Uh, for example, ito yung nasa acid drain. We have the sulfur trioxide and water. They will produce sulfuric acid. Kaya may acid drain. Okay. Uh, ito, we have two moles of nitric oxide plus oxygen. It will produce two moles of and nitrogen dioxide, which is another component of the acid drain because nitrogen dioxide reacts with uh, water in the air to produce nitric acid. No? In this case naman, peroxide yun nilagay nila. Okay? So, ganun lang yung format nila. Basically, yung dalawang compounds, pagsasamahin mo lang to form the products. Pag nakakita kayo ng ganyang equation, that is called the combination reaction. Okay, so ganun lang. By the way, I think, ano no, sa lecture nyo, most likely hindi na-cover yung nomenclature. Uh, I know this chapter lang din yun sa lecture nyo yung nomenclature. No? So kung hindi nyo pa alam magpangalan, it, uh, okay lang naman sa akin kasi si lecture na yung bahala mag-discuss sa part na yun. Okay, so basta for now, ano lang tayo, yung formats lang aalamin natin. Okay. So, hopefully, ma-discuss ni lecture in sooner time or kung tapos na, better. Okay. So, yan yung combination reaction. Again, you have your two different compounds. They combine to produce the products. So, basically, A plus B producing AB. Next one is the decomposition reaction. So, when we have decomposition reaction, what happens here is that we have a compound that is being uh, degraded or decomposed no, to produce many molecules. No? So we start from a big molecule. Tapos, after the reaction, they will be cut down into portions. No? So, liliit na yung mga molecules natin kasi naputol na sila. Okay? So the general format for the decomposition reaction is that you have one reactant, then pagdating sa product side, sobrang dami nang nakalagay na molecules. Okay? So, here are some examples. Um, uh, for example, itong water, pag kinuryente mo yung tubig, it will bubble out. No? So, it will produce hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. No? So, yun yung ano, decomposition of water or that's also called electrolysis of water. So again, what happens here, ang nangyayari is that yung ating water molecule, they are being uh, they are being broken down to hydrogen gas and oxygen gas na lang. Okay, so here are other examples pa. Suppose we have calcium carbonate. It we, if we heat that, pag ininit yan, it will produce calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Okay, so pag ininit natin yung mga carbonate, magi steam yan magpo-produce yan ng ano parang gas that gas is composed of carbon dioxide okay and here are some other example we have potassium chlorate when you heat that it will produce potassium chloride and oxygen gas okay so again what's the general format for the composition reaction you have one reactant and it will produce many products Okay. So, hindi siya limited to two. Pwedeng tatlo or higit pa. Basta isang molecule galing sila, that's the composition reaction. So, ano mga reasons bakit na decompose Pwedeng kinuryente mo yung mga molecules. No? So, when you introduce electric current to your molecules, uh, you can actually uh, cut the bonds. No? Pwede mo actually maputol yung bonds nila. For example, yun sa tubig. So, if you applied electric current sa water, yun, mapuputol na yung mga chemical bonds nila. So, they will produce gases. Okay. So, another reason also for molecules that ano, undergo decomposition reaction is that ininit mo sila. Hinit mo. Okay. So, pag ininit mo yan, mag escape na yung mga gases such as carbon dioxide, water molecules, etc. Okay. And so, for the next one, we have the single replacement reaction. 
So, single replacement reaction is parang ano lang to. Magsuswitch lang sila ng partner. So, the general format is A plus BC, wherein BC functions as one molecule. Pagdating sa product side, magsuswitch sila ng partner. So, si A kakabit na sa C and si B matitira. So, that's the general format for this reaction. Okay? So, some of the examples are the following. Just observe mo lang yung formula nila. Tignan mo if ang ating metals ay nag-switch. No? Usually, yung metal yung nag switch no? Such as iron, copper, magpapalit sila to produce iron to sulfate and copper metal. Okay? So, here are some, of, uh, here are some examples as well. Okay, so kunwari we have ano, uh, fluorine gas plus sodium chloride. Um, magkakaroon niya ng single displacement or single replacement to produce uh, chlorine gas and sodium fluoride. Okay, so ganun lang yung format na. Okay, so itong single replacement reaction, this is one of the common reasons why our metal loses its luster. L-U-S-T-E-R, luster, no? yung kintab niya. Okay? So, bigay kayo example ng mga metals na nawawalan ng kintab or luster. Yun yung mga, ano, mga, for example, mga silver cup, no? kaya jewelry, yung mga quintas-quintas na, let's say, silver-plated, o kaya gold-plated, copper-plated materials, no? barya. So, lahat ng mga may bakal, even yung mga uh, normal na bakal lang sa ano, construction. Uh, the reason why they lose the luster, they lose the shine, no, is because of the single replacement reaction. Okay? So, what happens there is yung ating metal, they are converted into oxides. No? They are converted into other products. No? And as a result, nawawala yung behavior ng bakal. Okay? So, hindi na sila makintab. Okay? So, yun yung ano, and yung one example of this reaction. Okay. So, yeah. so that's one of the many applications of the single replacement reaction. Okay. So next naman natin is uh, let us predict when will metals react with ions. No? Kailan magkakaroon ng reaction yung metal with ions. No? That behavior or that phenomena can be predicted by activity series of the pental. So what is an activity series? It is a list no, or a series of chemical reactions that happen no, or may not happen. No. So parang dito nakalista kung kailan mangyayari yung reaction at kailan hindi. No. So this is the list. Uh, of the reactivities of our compounds. No? Okay. So, sila lahat ay governed by single replacement reaction. Okay. So, ito yung activity series. Uh, hindi nyo kailangan kabisaduhin yan. So, okay lang isave yung picture. Okay. So, in this activity series, the atoms on the top of hydrogen gas, okay, so itong H2, ito yung hydrogen gas, parang ito yung baseline natin. Any metals above that can react with ions, okay? So, itong mga to, pwede sila mag-react with ions. Okay, so pwede sila mag-react with acid, for example. And any metals below it, uh, they will not react with uh, water. Okay, so ang rule dito is kung sino yung mas mataas dito sa table na to, siya yung mas mauunang mag-react, okay? Kung sino yung nasa baba ng table na to, siya yung huli na magre-react. Okay? So, ganun lang yung idea ng table na to. Okay? So, I will give more examples sa ating worksheet para dito. So, the next one is the double replacement reaction. Okay? So, for double replacement reaction, what happens here is that we have two separate Ionic compounds, meron tayong ionic compound A, pati ionic compound B. Ang mangyayari dyan is that after the reaction, they will switch partners. No? Magsiswitch sila ng kanilang partner. Okay? 
So one way to tell if that reaction happened is when may na-produce tayong precipitates. Okay? So what are precipitates? Precipitates are solids dissolved in the solution. Okay? So suppose we have this reaction, we have silver nitrate plus sodium chloride. When you mix the two, it will give off a precipitate, silver chloride precipitate. Okay? So again, one of the common products of double replacement reaction is the precipitates. Okay? So sila yung mga ano, chunk ng solids in our solution. Kapag walang chunk na solid na nabuo, ibig sabihin, hindi nangyari yung double re replacement. Okay? So, yan. So, again, precipitation reaction, is, it is one of the prominent forms of the double displacement reaction. So, what we produce here ay yung mga precipitates natin. Mga solid precipitates. Okay? Ang tanong, kailan natin malalaman kung makakabuo tayo ng precipitates? So, madali lang. So, we have this table uh, showing us the solubility rules. No? So, suppose you have ions from different compounds. Uh, dito natin malalaman if precipitate can be formed or not. Pag kaya makabuo ng precipitate, ibig sabihin double replacement reaction occurs. Pag hindi kaya gumawa ng precipitate, ibig sabihin, walang double replacement reaction. So, let's have some examples. No? So, balikan natin yung silver nitrate. No? Pati yung sodium chloride kanina. Paano nila nalaman na silver chloride at sodium nitrate yun na form? Ganito lang ginawa nila. So, sabi dyan sa precipitation reaction, the first thing that you're going to do is to switch yung partners nila. So, sino partner ni silver? Si chloride. Sino yung partner ni nitrate? Si sodium na, no? So, magpapalit na sila ng partners, no? So, pagpalitin natin sila ng partners, so we, have, we will now have AgCl and NaNO3. By the way, when they switch partners, take note that kailangan same sila ng charge, no? Kapag hindi sila same ng charge, then you have to introduce subscripts, no? Mamaya magbibigay ako ng example dyan. So this is our, re ano? this is our reaction. We have silver nitrate and sodium chloride. Sabi natin, it will produce silver, chlo silver chloride and sodium nitrate. Okay. So, from our products, alamin natin kung may precipitate bang mabubuo. Pag may precipitate na mabubuo, ibig sabihin, double, uh, double replacement uh, reaction occurred. No? Pero kapag walang precipitate na nabuo, ibig sabihin nun, no reaction. So, ano yung mga products natin? We have silver chloride and sodium nitrate. Paano natin malalaman kung sila ay precipitate? We have to check the solubility rules. So gagawin nyo, once you were able to determine ano yung products natin, tignan nyo yung solubility rules. No? Hanapin nyo yung sodium, yung mga metals natin, hanapin natin yan. Uh, sabi dito, sodium, compounds containing alkali metal ions. Ibig sabihin, sodium. Saan siya naka-under? Naka-under siya sa soluble compounds. No? Ibig sabihin, lahat ng compounds ng sodium ay soluble. So, it means sodium nitrate is soluble. So, ganun lang. Titignan mo lang kung nasaan dyan yung ions mo. Okay, tignan mo kung siya ay nasa soluble or kung siya ay nasa insoluble. So, titingin ka lang dito. Okay. So, since sabi dito, sodium ay under sa soluble compounds, then that means sodium nitrate is soluble. Wala naman sinabi siyang exemption okay? or exceptions. No? Okay, ibig sabihin soluble talaga yan. How about silver chloride? 
So for silver chloride, tingin ulit tayo dito sa list natin. Hanapin mo yung silver. Ayun, so may silver tayo. We have silver here and silver there. Okay? Uh, basahin natin. Uh, dito muna tayo sa first na silver. Soluble compounds, kasama dun ang halides. No? So, ibig sabihin yung mga fluoride, bromide, iodide, chlorides. No? So, eto, dito tayo titingin. Kasi we have a silver and chloride, di ba? Uh, tignan natin. Sabi dito, halides or chlorides are soluble. Except, Dito, kapag may nakalagay dito, ibig sabihin nun, except, no? Ibig sabihin, hindi siya soluble pag ganun. So, ang Cl ay soluble except halides of silver, mercury 1, and lead 2. Ang tanong, ano yung kapartner ng chloride natin dito? Ang kapartner ng chloride natin ay silver. Eh, nakalagay dito na exemption siya sa solubility ng chlorides. So, sabi dito, halides are soluble except halides of silver, mercury 1, and lead 2. Okay? So, since ang ating cation dito ay silver, that means, ito ay precipitate, no? Or ito ay insoluble. Okay? So, again, paano mo malalaman kung yan ay soluble or not? So, ganito unang gagawin nyo. You write your products, no? Alamin mo kung anong products mabubuo mo. And then, you check for the ions ng products natin. Tingin ka lang dito. Pag dito lang siya nakalagay sa left, ibig sabihin nun, soluble siya. Or kapag dito lang, insoluble siya. etong mga nasa kanan, it will tell you yung exemption sa rule. Now, for example, Halide, soluble sila, except, ayan. Sulfate, soluble sila, except, ayan. Ako nari dito naman. Uh, carbonates are insoluble, except, and hydroxides are insoluble, except, ganun. Okay? So, dito mo malalaman kung kailan hindi gagana yung rule na to sa left. Okay? So, I'll give some more examples pa. So, kuha pa tayong iba pang examples. Um, ito, ginawa ko to sa thesis. No? O, ito. Alamin natin yung products na mabubuo natin. Alamin ang products na mabubuo mo from this reaction. So again, this is a double displacement reaction. So magsuswitch ng partners yung ating metal, pati yung uh, non-metals, na yung mga cation, pati anion. So sino yung makakaswitch ni sodium? Si kapartner ni lead, yung nitrate. No? Then, si sulfur, sino makakaswitch niya? Si lead, okay? So, magsuswitch partners tayo. Okay. Kaso, ano mapapansin mo, may mga subscript ka na dito, no? Kunwari, Na2S, no? PB, may parenthesis, NO3, subscript 2. So, ano meaning ng parenthesis na yon? Okay. So, saan ba galing yun? Nang galing yung mga parenthesis na yan sa pagdetermine ng ionic formula. No? Actually, sa lecture ito, no? Pero, dami na natin. So, yung mga subscript na yan sa ating chemical formula, na, nangyari yan dahil sa pagdetermine natin ng ionic formula natin. Okay? So, di ba last chapter, sabi natin, depending on the group numbers sa periodic table, may corresponding charges sila. For example, we have sodium. Ano yung charge niyan? Positive 1. Okay? Oh, si sulfur, anong group number yan? Group 6. So, ang charge niya ay negative 2. Okay? When we form ionic compounds, we have to do the crisscross. No? Kailangan gawin yung crisscrossing. Ano yung crisscrossing? Ang crisscrossing, ang gagawin mo lang doon is yung, yung coefficient, I mean yung exponents mo, yun ay gagawin mong subscript no? ng kabilang atom. 
bucket, no? Kasi that will tell you the proper amounts of each chemical species para balance yung charges, no? Para equal yung charge nila. So, it will tell you, yung crisscross, it will tell you kung ilang atoms ang kailangan para equal siya ng charge sa kapartner niya. Okay. So, yan. So, yung sodium, yung 2 na exponent ni sulfur, magiging subscript yun ni sodium. So, that will be Na subscript 2. How about sulfur? O, yung sulfur, ang magiging subscript niya ay 1. No, hindi ko nisusulat kapag 1. Okay. So, that means, for us to create an ionic compound of sulfur and sulfide ions, kailangan natin ng dalawang sodium at isang sulfur. No, ito yung ginagawa din natin last time. However, may Lewis dot symbol tayo nun eh. Okay. So, ganun. So, kailangan, alamin mo muna yung charges ng iyong atoms dito. So, alamin natin yung charges ng bawat atom. Okay? So, alam natin, sodium is positive 1 and sulfur is negative 2. Kasi nasa group number nila yun. So, again, alamin mo muna kung ano yung mga charges nila. O, si lead nitrate kaya. Ako na rin, ganyan. Paano mo, paano mo malalaman yung charges nila? O, kung kanina, crisscross, pababa yung ano, direction ng ating numbers. Ngayon, we will do the reverse crisscross. O, suppose you start with the compound, alamin mo yung kanyang charges, i-reverse mo yung crisscross. Okay? Itong 2, saan ang galing yan? Yan ay galing kay lead. So, dun yung 2 na yan. O yung 1 dito, hindi yan obvious, pero may 1 dyan. Saan yung galing? Kay nitrate. No? So, dun yung galing kay nitrate. So, that means, lead is positive 2. And nitrate ion is negative 1 in charge. No? Always, ang metal ay positive. Okay? So, positive yung metal, then yung katabi niya, negative. Okay? So, kung ano yung nasa left side, yun yung mga positive. Kung ano yung nasa right side, yun yung mga negatively charged. Okay. So, ito yung original na mag-partner. Sodium pati sulfur, lead pati nitrate. Tapos, ano sabi sa double displacement? Magsiswitch sila ng partners. Magsiswitch sila ng partners. So, si sodium, ang magiging bagong partner niya ay si nitrate. Si lead, ang magiging bagong partner niya ay si sulfide. Okay? So, ano yung chemical compound na bubuo kapag may sodium at nitrate ions tayo? Sodium and nitrate ions. So, ano yung chemical compound na mabubuo natin? Ano yung formula niya? No, we do this, ano, crisscross. So, gawin mo, if you have a polyatomic ion, Yan yung ano, ion na maraming atoms, such as nitrate. Lagyan mo ng parenthesis. So, yung 1 na to, yung charge ng nitrate, saan mapupunta yan? Sa baba ni sodium. Itong positive 1 ni sodium, saan mapupunta yan? Sa baba ni nitrate. Okay? So, the chemical compound when we combine sodium and nitrate is... Na1, parenthesis, NO3, 1. Pag 1 yung subscript mo, pwede mo naburahin yun, including the parenthesis, okay? So, pwede mo naburahin yung parenthesis, no? Pati yung 1, okay? So, that the chemical compound, when we combine sodium and nitrate ions, is NaNO3 in formula. Nano 3. Okay. How about when we combine lead and sulfur? Pagsamahin natin yung lead and sulfur. Uh, we have PB2 plus and then S negative 2. When we combine that, saan mo pupunta yung 2 ni lead? Sa baba ni sulfur. Si sulfur, saan mo pupunta yung charge niya na negative 2? Sa baba ni lead. No? So, the formula 
when we combine them is PB2 S2. Okay? So, yun yung magiging formula niya. However, if you can reduce the subscript, i-reduce mo siya. No? So, ibig sabihin, kung pwede siya i-lowest term, i-lowest term mo. O, parehas to yan. Pwede yan i-lowest term. When we divide the subscripts by 2, no? pwede na i-lowest term as PBS. Okay? So, yan. Yun yung ating mga products. No? So, again, switch ng partner. Then you do the crisscross para malaman mo yung correct formula ng ating compounds. Ah, ngayon, alamin natin may precipitates ba tayo o wala. So, paano mo malalaman kung may precipitate? Yung solubility rules. Okay? So, balik ulit tayo dito. Ang compound natin ay sodium nitrate and lead sulfide. O, tingin tayo dito sa table. Hanapin natin yung sodium, yung nitrate, yung lead, pati yung sulfide ions. Okay? So, tignan natin kung may sinasabi itong table about them. Kung sila ba ay precipitate o hindi. No? O, we have sodium. O, ito sabi sodium. Okay? So, siya ay under soluble compounds. Since walang sinabi sa right, ibig sabihin nun, Soluble talaga lahat ng compounds of sodium. Okay. Ayan, sodium, under siya ng soluble compound. Walang exemption sa right side. So that means any compound of sodium is ionic no? or soluble. So ito ay soluble. Walang, ano eh, walang, ano, walang sinabing exception eh. So soluble yan. Sodium, soluble, okay. So, walang, wala nang may ibang sabi dito. How about lead and sulfur? O, tignan natin dito. Asan kaya yung lead? Ito, may lead dito na sinabi. Yan, may lead. Ito, may lead. Ayan yung mga lead. As yung sulfur, hanapin natin dito. Sulfate yan, so hindi yan. Ito, sulfur, sulfides. So, dyan, nakita natin yung lead, pati yung sulfide. O, tignan natin. Mm, asan dyan yung compound natin, yung lead sulfide? O, tignan natin to. Itong binilugan ko na lead, ang kapartner daw niyan dapat ay halides. O, hindi naman halide yung sulfur eh. Okay, so hindi siya group 7. So, X to. Hindi natin gagamitin yung rule na yan. Ah, gamit, tignan natin itong isang lead pa. Itong isang lead, ang kapartner daw niyan ay sulfate. Eh, sa case natin, sulf, ano eh, sulfide eh. Magkaiba yung S sa SO4. So, hindi ito yung rule na gagamitin natin. Ah, how about this? Sulfide. Basahin natin. Sulfides, under siya sa kategory na insoluble. Ibig sabihin, hindi talaga siya soluble. Except, uh, ano exception? When you combine it with alkali metal and ammonium ion. Ano yung alkali metal? Yun yung group 1 metals. Yung sodium, uh, lithium, sodium, potassium. No? So, yun yung mga alkali metals. And ammonium ion, NH4 plus yun. Ito yung question. Sino yung kapartner ng lead natin dito sa compound? Ay, sino yung kapartner ng sulfide sa compound natin? Si lead, okay? Lead yung kapartner niya. Tignan natin. Ang lead ba ay alkali metal? Hindi, no? Kasi ang lead ay nasa, uh, nasa P-block yan eh. Okay, so wala siya sa group 1. Nasa ibang group siya. So, hindi siya alkali metal. So, hindi natin ito nasunod. Hindi siya soluble, bale. Ammonium ion ba yung lead? Hindi rin. No? So, that means, since hindi siya pasok sa exception, ibig sabihin, yung compound natin na ito ay insoluble talaga. No? Wala na tayong magagawa doon. Siya ay isang precipitate. No? 
So, ganun yung ano. Ganun yung gagawin nyo kapag magde-decide kayo dito. Tignan mo yung ions. Tapos, i-check mo anong group number siya. O ano yung sinasabi sa exemption. Baka pasok siya doon, no? Or et cetera, no? So, magbibigay pa ako isa pang example, ha? Another example will be this one. Nag-iisip ako ng example, no? Kaya, um... Okay. Uh, suppose we have this compound, K2SO4, potassium sulfate, and BANO3 to barium nitrate. Ano kaya yung mga products na mapuform natin? Uh, gagawin natin yung double displacement dito. Okay? So, double displacement kapag ganyan. Okay? Kailan ko malalaman kapag single displacement? Ganito. Kapag may metal ka, kunwari, K lang nakalagay sa gilid, uh, single displacement yan. Kailangan may metal. Pero in our case, hindi ito metal. So, ito ay double displacement. Okay. So, yan. So, alamin natin ano yung mga ano, charges ng ating atoms. Okay. So, ang charges ng ating atoms dito ay ito. Punta tayo kay K2SO4. Yung SO4, ayan ay polyatomic ion. Okay, so, ibig sabihin niya na ion ng maraming atoms. Lagyan natin ng parenthesis. So, ano yung subscripts natin dito? Yung 2, pati yung 1 sa labas ng parenthesis. No? Ng imaginary parenthesis. O, saan galing yung 2? Magre-reverse crisscross tayo. From subscript, gagawing charge. Saan galing yung 2? Kay... SO4. So, doon, negative 2. Oh, how about yung 1 na subscript ng sulfate? San galing yan? Yan ay galing kay K, no? When you do the crisscross. So, the charge of K is positive 1. The charge of SO4 is negative 2. So, yan. nalaman na natin yung original charges nila. So, we have K plus and then SO4, negative 2. How about this one? Barium nitrate. Alamin natin yung original charges nila by doing reverse crisscross. Okay. So, yung polyatomic ion natin may parenthesis na. Ano yung polyatomic ion? Yung nitrate, NO3. So, yan yung medyo kailangan nyo kabisaduhin. No? So, ituturo naman yung sa lecture nyo. Okay? So, nagkasabay kasi itong topic na to. Dapat na una to kay kaysa dito eh. Pero, okay na rin naman. Okay? So, saan galing tong 2 na to? Sky nitrate. When you, do, when you do the reverse crisscross, yan ay galing kay barium. Since barium is a metal, positive yung charge niya. O yung barium, ano yung subscript dyan? Pag walang nakalagay, 1 lang yun. Okay? San galing yung 1 na yan? Kay? Nitrate. Okay? So, negative 1. Kasi positive, one, positive yung ano eh, barium. So, kailangan negative yung nitrate. So, ang charges natin for barium nitrate are Ba2+, plus, pati... NO3 minus. Then, ano sabi natin? Magsiswitch sila ng partner. So, si potassium, ang magiging new partner niya ay si nitrate. Si sulfate, ang magiging new partner niya ay barium. Okay? So, alam, alamin natin yung formula when we combine those ions. So, what will be the formula when we combine potassium 
and nitrate ions. Uh, Magki-crisscross tayo. So, yung one na yan, saan niya mapupunta? Sa so, subscript ng polyatomic ion. Again, kapag polyatomic ion, lalagyan mo talaga ng parenthesis. Kasi may mga gumagawa ng ganito. Oh. Kunwari, 2A yan. May mga gumagawa. Kunwari, 2 yan. Ginagawa nila 3 times 2. May NO6 daw. Mali yan, ha? So, sa labas ng polyatomic ion, maglalagay ng number. So, kunwari, 2 yan. Pag binaba mo yan, nasa labas. Hindi sa loob. Okay. Kaya sabi ko sa inyo, lagyan yung parenthesis parate. So, itong 1, magpupunta yan sa subscript ng labas na parenthesis. Itong 1, ganun din. Kay potassium siya magpupunta. So, the formula for the ionic compound of potassium and nitrate ion is KNO3 na lang. Plus... Ano yung isa pang magka-partner? Si barium pati si sulfate. Okay? Sulat ko dito. Oh, may polyatomic ayong ka, lagyan mo ng parenthesis. Automatic yun ha. Huwag nyo makakalimutan yun. Oh, oh, Criss-cross tayo. Itong 2, saan yan mapupunta? Sa baba ng sulfate. Itong 2. Saan mapupunta yan? Sa baba ni barium. So, we will have Ba2 SO4 parenthesis 2. Since ang ating subscripts ay parehas na 2, pwede natin yan i-reduce to lowest term. Right. So, pwede mo yan i-reduce as Ba SO4. Pag parehas na 2 yan, pwede mo na i-cancel out yan. Okay? O na rin, parehas na 3 yan, i-cancel out mo na rin. So, ito yung ating product when we do the double displacement reaction. So, ayan na yan. Ngayon, alamin natin kung may precipitates. Kung meron, ibig sabihin, nangyari yung double displacement. Pag walang precipitate na nabuo, ibig sabihin, hindi nangyari yung double displacement. Okay? So, tignan natin uli yung solubility rules kung may precipitate ba tayo or wala. So, ang ating ions ay potassium nitrate and barium sulfate. So, the usual, tignan natin yung mga ions dito sa table. Hanapin yung potassium, ayan, nitrate, ayan, barium, to sulfate, ayun, okay. Ito, may barium pa dyan. Okay. Uh, yun lang. So, yun, tinignan lang natin ah, saan yung mga ions natin. So, kailangan makita nyo siya dyan sa table. Uh, hindi naman nangyayari yung wala sa table. No? Never yan. Always nasa table yung ating ions. E, double check mo lang pag di mo nakita. So, ito yung ating products. Tignan natin kung may precipitate yan. Kasi kung may precipitate, ibig sabihin, nangyari yung double displacement. Kapag wala, edi hindi nangyari yung reaction. Um, Potassium nitrate muna. Tignan natin. O ito, potassium. Mm, nitrate din. Meron nakalagay. San sila under? They are under the soluble compound category. So that means ito ay soluble. So soluble na ito. Eh, eh, paano kaya yung barium sulfate? BASO4. Paano kaya ito? Tingin ulit tayo sa ating table. So, ito may barium, ito may sulfate. Oh, sakto. Silang dalawa yung na-mention. Ang sabi dito, sulfates are soluble. Except, kailan siya hindi nagiging soluble? Sulfates of silver, calcium 2+, plus, strontium 2+, plus, barium 2+, plus, mercury 1, and lead 2+. Plus. So, again, 
sulfides are soluble except sulfates of silver, calcium, strontium, barium, mercury, and lead. At di ba barium yung ating partner ng sulfate? No? So, ibig sabihin, pasok siya sa exception. Soluble na sana siya kung hindi barium yung katabi niya. Kaso, barium yung kasama niya eh. Ibig sabihin, this compound is a precipitate. Okay? So, yan ay precipitate. Ibig sabihin, the double displacement reaction occurred. So, ganun lang. Pag wala kang precipitate na nabuo, ibig sabihin, hindi nangyari yung double displacement. Again, paano mo malalaman kapag precipitate? Tingin ka lang sa solubility rules. Tignan maigi yung exceptions. Pag nakalista dito, ibig sabihin, insoluble na to. Pag dito naman sa baba, nakalista sa right side, ibig sabihin, soluble sila. Okay? So, mag-ingat lang sa pagbasa dito. Kailan mo malalaman kapag may precipitate? Kapag may, yan, may cloud clouds na nabuo sa solution. Okay. Another type of reaction is called the combustion reaction. Ito yung nangyayari sa kalan natin. So, this is a chemical reaction in which your molecules, especially hydrocarbons, are being converted to carbon dioxide and water. So again, this is a reaction of molecules, usually hydrocarbons, producing carbon dioxide and water. Okay. So anong hydrocarbons? Ito yung molecule ng carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. No? Uh, minsan may oxygen, minsan wala. No? So, ano hydrocarbons? Basta may C at H hydrocarbon yan. Ito yung mga ibang examples. I have C2H2, that's acetylene. C3H8, that's ano? Propane. C4H8, that's uh, butene. No? So, yan yung mga hydrocarbons. Wag muna kayo mag-worry sa pangalan nila. Hindi pa nagmamatter yan sa ngayon. Hindi discuss yan sa dulo ng, ano, sa, sa dulo ng SEM. Okay? So, ito yung ating mga hydrocarbons. These are compounds that consist of carbon and hydrogen. Okay? So, what happens is that they react with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water vapors. No? So, yan. So, ano yung nangyayari sa gasolina natin? What happens in gasolina, you have octane, di ba, ano, Sa sasakyan, you have octane, that's C8H18. Um, so, ito yung octane. It is being combusted with oxygen in the air to produce carbon dioxide and water. So, ganyan yung kanyang format sa reaction. Basta may CO2H2O sa product, combustion yan. And here are also some other uh, reactions no, ng combustion kapag hindi hydrocarbon yung kasama. No? Yan. So, hindi naman kami magbibigay masyado ng ganito. So, don't worry. Hindi naman masyadong necessary. Okay. So, ano yung importance ng combustion reactions? No? So, combustion reactions are reactions that are actually done sa ating mga engine, no? Sa ating mga coal power plants, sa ano, natural gas power plant, sa uh, sa sakyan, no? So, lahat ng mga 'yan, they use combustion reaction for the machinery to work, no? However, the problem is that it produces carbon dioxide. And we know that carbon dioxide is one of the many global warming gases. No? So, yung, sila, yung mga nagko-contribute sa global warming. Okay? So, yun. So, over time, no, simula nung nag, nangyari yung industrial revolution sa England, no? until nagkaroon ng world wars and then up to the modern era, 
tumaas yung ating use ng fuels no, that produces carbon dioxide and water to an unprecedented level. No? So, yung, sam- yung paggamit natin, hindi na natin mawari. No? Kasi super dependent tayo dito. Sa Philippines alone, no, majority of the energy produced ay galing sa combustion reaction ng coal, no? pati ng natural gas. So, as a result, maraming carbon dioxide na na evap na na produce no and dumahalo siya sa ating atmosphere. So if we can look take a look at this graph no. So around 18th century, 19th century, doon nag-start yung industrial uh, industrial revolution kung saan umasa na yung mga tao sa machinery to speed up our production, sa to speed up the means of production. So tignan niyo ano nangyari sa graph no. So starting that era uh, that era unti-unti nagtaas yung production ng CO2 kasi gumagamit na tayo ng mga fuels. And then after the world wars, no? So that's around 1947, 1945 sa Europe, no? Sa Philippines 1947 nag-end, no? So after that, tignan nyo, may sudden steep tayo. Dito na dito na pinanganak yung mga boomers, no? Say booming economy that time because of the uh, of the industrial revolution. Ito na yung produkto ng industrial revolt. No? So, yan, nag-boom na yung ating economy and at the same time, nag-boom din yung ating CO2 production. So, until now, tumataas yan. No? And, ano effect nun? So, tumataas yung mga greenhouse F, uh, gases natin. So, yung greenhouse gases, ito yung mga molecules that are trapped in the atmosphere that ano that prevents the radiation from the sun to escape no so di ba naarawan tayo Ito, may picture tayo so yan naarawan tayo ng sun normally yung greenhouse gas ang purpose nila is to make the surface of the earth warm no kasi kapag walang greenhouse gas super lamig sa earth no magyelo tayo kaya nga sa mars ganun ka lamig eh nagyelo doon di ba So, ang purpose ng greenhouse gas is to absorb some of the radiant energy from the sun para magwarm yung earth, no? To make life possible. However, because of our, ano, misuse of science, no? Uh, negligence na rin, no? Sa, sa tindi ng ating greed as people, no? Nangyari, masyado na tayo maraming CO2 na na-produce And as a result, mas dumami yung heat energy na na-absorb ng greenhouse gases. Okay lang sana, pero kasi anong nangyari ngayon, super dami ng heat yung na-absorb nila. And ano yung effect nun? So since tumataas na yung ano, absorb energy ng greenhouse gases from our sun, nagkakaroon na tayo ng tinatawag na global warming. So, global warming is a global phenomenon. No? So, hindi siya short term. No? Dati pa to. So, simula nang tumas yung use natin ng CO2, we observe that the temperature of the earth is increasing every year. No? So, just last time lang, kani, uh, latest lang to, no? around two days ago, may kita nyo sa Facebook yung yung malaking chunk ng yelo na nag-break off from Antarctica that is caused by global warming. Okay? So, since masyado na mainit sa surface ng Earth kasi ang dami ng greenhouse gases, yun, yung mga yelo natin natutunaw na and hindi siya masaya, no? Bad yan kasi kapag umiinit na yung water, ano, yung water temperature natin, it will cause more water to evaporate. And kapag mas maraming tubig ang nag-evaporate, meaning mas malakas na typhoon, no? mas mataas na flooding, may mga yelo, matutunaw, yung mga polar ice caps natin. Ano pa yung result niyan? Ang aking nabasa, sabi doon sa paper na nabasa ko dati, no? uh, kapag natunaw yung mga yelo, bababa yung salinity ng dagat. Hindi na siya magiging maalat. Okay? So, ang reason daw kasi, isa sa mga reason bakit may tidal waves is dahil sa 
differences sa salinity ng dagat. So, depende sa alat ng dagat, di ba alam nyo may osmosis. So, yun daw yung mga isang factor bakit may mga tidal waves, no? yung osmosis. No? Kapag daw yung alat sa dagat bumaba na, what happens is that humihinto yung tidal waves. No? Ano mangyayari kapag huminto yun? No? Masisira na yung global pattern talaga natin. No? So, yun, nabasa ko na yun, that's the worst case scenario daw, sabi niya doon. Okay. Once na huminto daw yung mga tidal waves sa ilalim ng dagat, kapag bumaba na yung saltiness ng dagat, yun, most likely, we will be extinct in few years. No? So, yan. So, yan. So, it is also scientifically uh, determined that people are the primary cause of the global warming. Our activities, no? So, ibe-blame nila yan sa livestock kasi yung, ammonia, uh, yung ano daw, CH4, that's 15% of the, ano, of the greenhouse gases. Totoo naman, no? Pero bakit ba dumami yung livestock? Kasi maraming tao, no? So, yan. So, ano pwede natin gawin to prevent the global warming? Ano lang? Tanggapin na lang natin, hindi, no? May mga ways naman, no? Kunwari, mag-deforest kayo. Uh, pag nag-gcash kayo, ipunin nyo yung G-forest kasi magtatanim yun ng puno. Although, it seems na parang hindi na kaya. Kaya yan, no? Uh, just, just, kailangan ng global effort talaga, no? And, of course, we should go to eco-friendly alternatives, no? So, yan. Kaya na uso yung electric vehicles, yung solar panels, yung nuclear power plant, no? So, yun. Sila yung mga alternative forms of energy that doesn't produce CO2 kasi. Okay? So, yun lang. Share lang namin yan. So, anyway. So, let's have some exercise now. Let us classify the following chemical reaction as a combination, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, or combustion reaction. So, ito. So, we have the following items. I-identify natin sino, ano sila, ano yung pattern nila. Ayan. So, letter A, we have KNO3 and the produce natin ay KNO2 plus O2. Anong type of reaction yan? Uh, so, ano ga unang yung gagawin? Tignan nyo, ilang reactant meron kayo? Isa lang, KNO3 lang. Pagdating sa product, dumami na siya, no? Yung KNO3 naging KNO2, pati oxygen gas. So, since dumami yung product natin, we can tell that this is a decomposition reaction. So, yung decomposition reaction yan, no? Dumami yung products natin, eh. So, we started with one molecule, tas biglang dumami. So, that's the composition. How about letter B? Oh, you have zinc and silver nitrate. Pagdating sa product side, yung zinc may kapartner na. Yung silver, malungkot na. No? Mag-isa na lang. So, ano yan? Yan ay? Single displacement. So, yan ay single displacement reaction. Bakit? Kasi tignan nyo, nag-switch lang sila ng partners. Uh, sino ka-partner ni nitrate? Si silver. Pagdating sa product, sino ka-partner niya? Si zinc. No? So, that is a single displacement reaction. How about letter C? We have nickel nitrate, nickel 2 nitrate, and sodium hydroxide na produce niya ay nickel hydroxide and sodium nitrate. Ang sagot, sabi ni Bianca ay double displacement. No? Ano nangyari? Nag-switch-switch na sila ng partner. Si nickel, naging kapartner na niya, si OH. Si sodium, ang naging kapartner na niya ay si nitrate. No? So, this is double displacement. About letter D? Oh, sige, uh, letter D. That is a combination reaction. Okay, so good. So, naging combination to kasi you have two reactants, then pagdating sa product, naging combined na sila. Another term for combination is synthesis. 
So, yun. Ibig sabihin, magsasama. Magfuse sila together. Okay. So, ngayon naman, ayun lang, ganun lang. Pagdating ng midterm, nakita ko na kasi midterm exam niya. Madali lang as in. Uh, mas mahirap pa yung binigay kong mga quiz dati kasi sa midterm. So, alam ko kaya niya yun. And also, focus sa video sa lab. Di ba, may mga video doon na panoorin niyo ulit. Ha? Uh -oh. Yung density calculation nga doon, mas madali pa talaga eh. Uh, kasi divide-divide lang talaga. Di ba, yung ginawa natin, derive-derive, no? Hindi na ganun. Tapos, yung mga video sa lab, flame test, no? Ayan, panoorin niyo ulit. No? May mga ganung items doon. So, anyway, basta yung mga video, panoorin niyo ulit. No? Karamihan ng questions doon eh, sa laboratories to. Uh, writing chemical equations. No? So, what is a chemical equation? Uh, yun yung kanina pa natin nakikita. No? They represent the changes sa ating molecules. No? Kung ano yung mga naging kapartner ng atoms and ano yung reactant, ano yung product. So, those are the chemical equation. It is a statement in which we see chemical symbols and kung ano yung nangyari na sa kanila. What are the changes that happened to them? So, there are two ways no, to describe reactions. Pwedeng word description or pwedeng chemical equation. So, dito sa word description, yung mga chemical formulas ine-express as words. No? Okay, so, for example, dito sa, sa item na to, calcium sulfide reacts with water to produce calcium oxide and hydrogen sulfide. Ngayon, paano mo yan i-interpret as chemical equation? So, madali lang yan. Ganito yung unang gagawin mo. So, from the statement, hanapin mo yung mga keywords na to produce na, and reacts with. Okay? So, ganun una mong gagawin. Hanapin mo yung keyword na reacts with pati yung to produce. Pag nakita mo yung to produce, ibig sabihin nun, lahat ng nasa right side ng word ay products. Okay? So, lahat ng nasa right side ng word na to produce ay products. Ibig sabihin, nasa right side sila. And yung mga nasa left side niya, itong calcium sulfide and water, yung nasa left side ng to produce, yun yung reactant. No? So, yun yung mga keyword natin. Ha? To produce, that means, papunta na sa product tayo. Okay? So, ano yung isa pang keyword? Yung reacts with. So, yan. From the word itself, reacts with. Ibig sabihin yan ay reactant. Ito at ito ay reactant. Okay? So, calcium sulfide and water reacts with sila. Ibig sabihin sila yung reactant. To produce, ibig sabihin nun, anything on the right ay product na. Okay? So, ganun. Ngayon, ang tanong sa atin is, paano ko sir malalaman yung formula from the name? No? So, I don't know if na-discuss na to sa lecture nyo, no? pero ideally, chapter 4 lecture to. Uh, Doon i-discuss yung naming ng chemical compounds. No? So, we usually name the metals first. For example, in this compound, calcium sulfide. So, yung calcium yun yung CA. Okay. So, what is the charge of calcium? Ca2 plus. No? Kasi nasa group 2 yan. Yung sulfide naman, basta may ide, ibig sabihin yan, anion yan. No? So, you have your cation, and then you have your anion. Yung sulfur yung anion mo, kaya sulfide yan. So, ano group number ng sulfur? Group 6. Ano yung charge niya? Negative 2. And then, you do the crisscross. No? So, crisscross mo yan you will get CAS. So, ganun. That's how we determine the molecular formula from the name. So, anyway, i-discuss naman yan sa lecture. So, di na ako mag-focus masyado. Marami pa tayong i-cover sa lab. Okay? So, hopefully, kaya nyo na mag-name ng compounds. Okay? So, ayan. So, ganun, ganun lang yung ano, ha? Ganun lang yung process, na. No? You just look for keywords. For example, react with, ibig sabihin, yung kasama na yon ay reactant na sa left yun. Pag nakita yung word na to produce, ibig sabihin, may arrow na yon. 
going to the products. And para ma-convert nyo yung names to formulas, kailangan may understanding na kayo ng naming ng compounds na, which will be discussed in your lecture. Uh, another example, uh, ito. Magnesium metal reacts with oxygen to produce solid magnesium oxide. So again, to produce, ibig sabihin ng arrow. Reacts with, ibig sabihin na sa reactant yun. Okay? So magnesium metal, ang kanyang formula ay Mg. Oxygen gas, ang formula nun ay O2. To produce magnesium oxide na. So, since ito ay may IDE na suffix, ito ay ionic compound. Ang magnesium ang cation, ang oxide ang anion. Okay? So, magnesium is Mg2+, oxide is O-2. If you do the crisscross, you will get the formula MgO. No. So, more details in your lecture prof na lang in your lecture discussion. The next one, we have sulfur dioxide gas reacts with water vapor to produce aqueous hydrogen sulfite and oxygen gas. Pag sinabing oxygen, usually gas yun. Okay? So again, my keywords tayo to produce. It means anything on the right ay product. So yung uh, ano, hydrogen sulfide and, ox and oxygen Yun yung mga products natin. And yung mga reacts with, yun yung mga nasa left side, yun ay mga reactants. Okay. So, hopefully, kaya na mag-name ng compounds na. Ito naman, letter C. Uh, suppose, kunwari may, may idea na kayo sa nomenclature. I think may alam na naman kayo dito. Okay, so let's have letter C. Calcium carbonate reacts to form solid calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Okay? So alamin mo muna yung chemical formulas ng mga compounds na sinabi. Now, calcium carbonate, yung suffix na 8 that tells you na ito ay ionic compound na. So, ano yung mga ionic compound? Yung mga 8 pati id yung suffix. Okay? So, that means calcium is the metal. So, Ca2 plus yun. Carbonate is the anion. Uh, ang formula ng carbonate ay CO3 negative 2. If you do the crisscross, na mangyayari, yung formula mo ay magiging Ca2, CO3, subscript 2. And since yung kanilang subscript ay parehas na 2, you can cancel them out to get the formula CaCO3. Yan yung calcium carbonate. Okay. So yan, you have your CaCO3, calcium carbonate. Uh, to form, ibig sabihin, araw na yan. Calcium oxide. Now, ito may e ide na ending, may id na suffix. Ibig sabihin, ito ay ionic compound. So, calcium ang iyong cation uli. Oxide ang anion mo. Pag sinabing oxide, O negative 2 yun. O, you do the crisscross. Itong 2, mapupunta kay oxygen. Itong 2, kay calcium. So, you will get Ca2O2. Again, pagparehas ng subscript, you can cancel it para maging CaO. Okay, so to form calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. Oh, carbon dioxide, so isang carbon, dalawang oxygen, CO2. So that's how we write the formula from the names or from words or from sentences. Uh, let's have letter D. Potassium chlorate reacts to form potassium chloride and oxygen gas. So, potassium chlorate, ito ay ionic compound ule, kasi 8 yung ending. Again, malalaman mo kapag ionic compound, kapag 8 at ide yung ending. Okay. 
So, potassium chlorate, that's an ionic compound kung saan potassium ang cation, chlorate ang anion. Ano formula ng chlorate? Yan ay ClO3 minus. So, since isa lang yung kanilang charge, positive 1, negative 1, so I, I can just simply combine them. No? Hindi ko na i-criss-cross kasi para mabilis tayo. So, KCL, uh, KClO3 lang yung formula niya. So, to form potassium chloride, so that's K plus, yung potassium ion, chloride ion is Cl minus. O, hindi ko na i-criss-cross yan kasi parehas namang 1 lang yung charge. So, pwede pagsamahin ko na lang sila. I can just combine them na lang. Plus oxygen gas. Pag oxygen gas, O2 yun. Basta may gas, ibig sabihin nun, uh, by, ano yun, dalawang atoms yun. Pwedeng O2, N2, H2, F2, yun. So, yun yung mga gases. No? Oxygen gas, O2, hydrogen gas, H2, um, nitrogen gas, N2, etc. Uh, let's have another one, last one. We have magnesium metal reacts with aqueous hydrochloric acid to produce aqueous magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. Okay, so magnesium metal. Pag sinabing magnesium metal, yung atomic symbol lang ng metal na yun. So Mg lang yun. Sabi dyan, it reacts with hydrochloric acid. So ano yung compound kapag hydrochloric acid? Ano formula niya? HCl. Nasa lecture yan. Pag in, hindi ko na i-discuss masyado in depth kasi sa lecture yan. Baka maagawan ko sila ng topics. Uh, to produce aqueous magnesium chloride. Uh, magnesium chloride, oh, again, may ide ka. May ide ka na suffix. So yan ay ionic compound. So magnesium is positive 2 in charge kasi group 2 siya. Chloride is negative 1 in charge kasi group 7 yan. Oh, you can do crisscross here. Yung 2 mapupunta doon, yung 1 mapupunta doon. So you can combine it as MgCl2. So yun yung formula ng magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas, oh, sabi ko kapag gas, dalawang atom parati yun, H2. So, yan yung ating mga compounds. Uh, hindi yan balanced. No? So, ibabalance mo na lang yan in the end. Okay. So, ito yung sagot. Na, however, dito nakabalance na siya. No? So, yan. So, this is calcium carbonate producing calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Potassium chlorate producing potassium chloride and oxygen gas. Magnesium metal reacting with hydrochloric acid to produce magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. Okay, so ganun lang. And lastly, ito mag-balancing na tayo. Basic lang naman yung balancing natin, don't worry. Okay, so, hindi na natin gagawin complicated as in simple lang. So, when balancing chemical equation, important ba talaga to? Yes, important to. Why? Because remember, sabi ko kanina, chemical reactions follow the law of conservation of mass. Okay. So, they follow the law of conservation of mass. So, ano ibig sabihin natin doon? So, kailangan kung ilan yung atoms mo sa left side, ganun din karami yung atoms mo sa right side. Okay? So, hindi pwedeng madagdagan or mabawasan. So, ito yung mga tips natin when balancing chemical formulas. Okay. Remember that we only add coefficients. Yun yung number sa tabi ng ating formula. So, ito yung mga formula. Ito yung coefficient, yung mga numbers. Okay. So, we only add coefficients. Because we can never change the subscript. We can never alter the subscript. Bakit bawal palitan yung subscript? Kasi you are changing the identity of the compound. Okay? 
For example, magkaiba ito. Magkaiba ito sa ito. Bakit? Um, subscript lang naman yung nagbago, sir. Hindi, magkaiba yan. Kasi dito, ang iron ay positive 2. Ang iron ay positive 3 sa baba. Magkaiba yung properties nila. So, ibig sabihin, wag babaguhin yung subscript. Never alter the subscript. Only add coefficients. Okay. And also, you balance the compounds first, elements last, no? For example, oxygen gas. O, sa dulo mo na ibabalance yun. Hydrogen gas, sa dulo na lang din. Uh, another thing is that, if possible, treat polyatomic ion as one unit, no? So, wag mo sila i-balance isa-isa. No? Kunwari, PO4. PO4. Iniisa-isa mo yung balance. No? May rapang ka. Abutin ka ng sham-sham dyan. So, you treat them as one unit. No? Mamaya, may pakita akong example dyan. And then lastly, kapag yung numbers ng ating atoms ay odd and even, pwede mo gawing even yung lahat by multiplying two. Okay? So, ito, medyo onti lang yung ano, onti lang nakalagay dito eh. Okay? So, pupunta na ako sa next material natin, sa PowerPoint. Okay? So, andito kasi yung mas maraming examples. Um, ayan. So, hindi ito. Sa medtech yan eh. So, gamitin na natin yung ating PowerPoint. Ah. So, let's balance the chemical equations na. Okay. Ah. So, gagawin mo dito, you create a list showing the number of atoms on the reactant side and the product side per element. Now, kunwari, you have this compound, carbon plus oxygen gas, producing carbon monoxide. Ah, kunwari, ganyan nangyari. Pa, paano mo ibabalance yan? Bilangin mo muna ilan yung carbon, ilan yung oxygen. So, ito na yun. On the left side, we have one carbon. On the right side, isang carbon. On the left side, we have two oxygens. On the right side, we have um, one oxygen. Ano yung sabi? We balance the compounds first, element last, no? So, ibig sabihin, instead na i-balance mo yung carbon agad, i-balance mo na yung mga oxygen, pati yung CO2. Ay, yung CO na. So, sila muna yung i-balance mo, O2 pati CO, instead of the element na carbon. Okay? So, since dalawa yung oxygen sa reactant side, isa lang sa product side, that means you have to multiply your product by 2. So, paano yun? Yung CO, lalagyan ko ng coefficient na 2. So, pag nilagyan ko yun ng coefficient na 2, ita times 2 ko yung mga atoms sa product side. So, ngayon, may dalawa na akong carbon sa product side and dalawang oxygen sa product side. O, balance na in terms of oxygen. Ano yung problema ko ngayon? yung reactant side. Balance na yung oxygen pa yung, pero yung carbon hindi na. Isa sa reactant, dalawa sa product. So ano yung multiply mo sa 1 para maging 2? Edi 2 na. So lalagyan mo ng coefficient na 2 si carbon so that the number of atom will be multiplied. So balance na ang iyong compound. Okay. So again, paano uli yung steps? You balance the compounds first, element last. Yung pag sinabing element, yun yung mga single atoms lang. Sa, saka mo na sila i-balance. Okay. So kapag odd number yan, sa kabila even number, to make them equal, you multiply it by 2, pwede rin by 3, para maging equal sila. So here's an alternate method na. So, an alternative method involves the use of fractions. No? We can use ano, we can use coefficients na fractions. Ibig sabihin, one-half, one-fourth, one-third. No? Pwede mo gamitin yan para mabalance mo yung atoms mo. 
Okay? Uh, suppose meron tayong ganitong formula ulit. Siya ulit. Ano pwede natin gawin dito? Di ba yung carbon balance na yung oxygen na hindi? Pwede natin i-multiply yung bigger number by a fraction so that it will be balanced with the other atoms na no? on the right side. No? So, ano ibig sabihin ko doon? No? Di ba yung carbon, okay na yan, balance na yan. Yung oxygen, hindi eh. Dalawa dito sa left side, isa sa right side. Sabi ko, I can multiply my formula na bigger yung number ng oxygen by a fraction para maging equal siya sa nasa right side. O isip tayo, ano pwede ko i-multiply sa 2 para maging 1? Pwede ko i-multiply yung 2 sa 1 half. So that means, ang magiging coefficient ko ay 1 half. Pwede yon. So, itong O2, pwede ko siya i-multiply sa 1 half so that the number of atoms here will be equal now to 1. So, 2 times 1 half is 1. Balance na yan. Ah, diba? Tapos na. So, ganun lang. Na? So, you can use full numbers, pwede rin fractions. Ako, personally, mas gusto ko fraction. Uh, although, not always naman. Case-to-case -case basis kasi ito eh. Kaya minsan, kabisado mo na lang yung formula. So, you don't need to do steps. No? Okay. So, yan. So, pwede ka gumamit ng fraction para maging balance na yun. However, ang final answer dapat ay naka whole number. Uh, yun lang yung ano, downside niya. So, nabalance mo na nga with fraction, pero kailangan mo whole number at the end. So, para yung fraction maging whole number, you multiply the entire equation by the denominator. Multiply mo yan lahat by 2, so you will get the integer uh, uh, integer coefficients. Okay? So, ganun lang. So, again, pwede fractions. Pero, ang gagawin mo, last step mo dun, gagawin mo silang whole number. How? By, di by dividing the entire equation by the denominator. So, kung nari, one half yan, i-multiply mo lahat by two para maging whole number yung one half. Kung nari, one third yan, hindi i-multiply mo yung buong equation by three. Okay? So, ganun lang. Bigyan ko kayo isa pang example. Oh, gusto ko balance nito using fractions. Try natin using fractions para mas ma ano natin ma-appreciate. Okay din naman yung whole number kasi yung ending din naman natin whole number. Pero yung fractions kasi I, I believe bago lang yan sa ibang tao. Ako tinuturo ko to sa senior high ko dati. Mas natuwa naman sila sa fractions. So, sa reactant, may dalawa akong nitrogen, dalawang hydrogen, isang nitrogen, tatlong hydrogen. Okay? So, yan. So, I can make this number of atoms equal by multiplying them or introducing a coefficient na fraction. Okay? So, paano yan? Ako na rin si nitrogen, dalawa sa left side, isa sa right side. Ano gagawin ko? So, pwede ko i-multiply itong nasa left ng 1 half, no? Pwede ko siya i-multiply by 1 half so that the number of atom will be equal to 1. So, 1 dito sa left side, sa right side, isa na lang din by introducing 1 half coefficient. Ayan, balance na yung nitrogen. How about hydrogen? So, for hydrogen, dalawa dito, tatlo doon. So, ang aking gagawin dyan ay parehas ko silang gagawing 3 na lang. Kasi nabalance ko na yung nitrogen. Ibig sabihin, hindi ko na ito pwede galawin pa. Okay? Nabalance ko na yung nitrogen. So, ayoko na galawin tong NH3. So, that means yung H2 yung mag a -adjust. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, tatlo na talaga yung H doon sa right side. So, pag pinalitan ko pa ito, babaguhin ko na naman tong N. Ayoko na. No? So, Yung H2, palitan natin. Ano yung multiply mo sa 2 para maging equal sa 3? 
Imumultiply mo siya sa anong fraction? 3 halves. Okay? So, multiply mo siya sa 3 over 2. So, what's 2 times 3 over 2? That's equals to 3. Okay? Ayan. O, balance na sila lahat. May tig isang nitrogen na sa left side, sa right side, and may tig tatlong hydrogen sa left side, pati sa right side. And of course, ang final answer natin ay naka-whole number. So, ibig sabihin, you multiply the equation by the denominator. Ano yung denominator natin? 2. So, you multiply the entire equation by 2 to get um, N2 plus 3H2 producing 2NH3. Di ba? So, ibig sabihin, it is possible to use fractions to balance the equation. Basta ang ending lang, gawin mo pa rin siyang whole number by multiplying the entire equation by the denominator. I think isa kong na-experience dati, may nagtanong sa akin, Sir, paano kapag, kunwari, ito one-third, ito one-half? Paano nga? Kasi nangyari yun sa amin last time. Eh. Ganito lang. Kunwari, ito one-third, ito one-half. So, three yung denominator dito, two sa kabila. Pag ganun, kunin mo yung kanilang GCF. Ano yung GCF ng 2 pati 3? 6. No? Basically, pag-multiply mo lang sila. So, pag ganun, i-multiply mo yung buong equation by 6. No? So, para ma-cancel yung mga denominator. Okay? So, anyway, that's an alternate method. Uh, suggestion lang yan. Ako, ginagamit ko yan. Pati mga senior high ko dati. Yan din gamit. So, it's up to you if you want to use the fractions. Pero if you find it kind of tricky, then, pwede naman kayo mag whole number na lang. Okay. So, next step is, ito naman, balancing ng ano, combustion reaction. Ano sabi natin? Kapag combustion reaction, we have our hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water. When balancing, ano, when balancing combustion reaction, ito yung mga atoms na binabalance muna. Carbon muna, hydrogen next, and oxygen last. Okay. So, ganun yung flow when balancing combustion reactions. Again, ano yung ibabalance muna? Carbon muna, hydrogen sunod, oxygen last. Okay? So, yun yung steps. So, tingin tayo dito. So, we have CH4, uh, C4H10 plus O2 producing CO2 and H2O. So, ano yung una kong ibabalance? No? Start ka kay carbon first. Pag combustion yan. Carbon muna. So, you have four carbons on the left side. On the right side, isa. So, that means I have to multiply the product side by four. Yung CO2, mumultiply ko sa four. Para maging apat na yung carbons ko. Okay? O, hayaan mo muna. Huwag mo na bilangin muna yung ibang atoms mo. Okay? So, ganun. So, carbon muna ibabalance. Apat ng carbon dito. Isa dito. So, i-multiply mo yung CO2 by 4 so that the carbons will be balanced. Okay na yung carbon, no? O, next, hydrogen. May sampu akong hydrogen dito. On the right side, dalawa lang. So, para maging sampu yun, I will multiply H2O by 5. So, magiging 10 din yan. Okay? So, balance na yung carbon, balance na yung hydrogen. Ang last kong gagawin ay si oxygen. Si oxygen, di ba, pinalitan mo na yung mga coefficients ng product side. Bilangin mo yung dami uli ng oxygen. Siyempre, nagbago na yan. Hindi na yan 3. So, bilangin natin yung oxygen dito sa product side. I have 4 times 2. Bakit times 2? Kasi may subscript si oxygen na 2. So, 4 times 2 yan, 8. 8 oxygens here. Plus, dito sa kabila, 5 times 1. So, yan ay 5 oxygens. So, 8 plus 5 is 13. 13, ah, uh, 13. 
So I have 13 oxygens na sa product side. Sa left side, dalawa lang. Paano ko ibabalance yun? Pwede gumamit ng fraction. Ayan. Fraction ulit. Ano multiply ko sa 2 para maging 13 yan? Anong fraction multiply ko dyan? Oh, any guess? Ang multiply ko sa 2 para maging 13 ay 13 over 2. Oh, basic lang. Paano? Paano nyo malalaman kung anong fraction gagamitin mo? Yung gusto mong number, yun yung sa numerator. Yung gusto mo i-cancel, yun yung sa denominator. Eh, di ba yung 2 gusto ko gawin 13? So, yung 13 na sa numerator, yung 2, since yun yung gusto ko i-cancel, siya ay nasa denominator. So, ang, if, ang aking coefficient ay magiging 13 over 2. Okay. Yan, so balance na sila ng dami ng oxygens. 13 oxygens dito, 13 oxygens din sa product side. Okay, so again, pwede po gumamit ng fraction. Okay, pag nasanay kayo, mas madali talaga mag-solve using fractions. Just so happened na may mga tao na takot sa fraction. Ako rin naman dati. I don't like fractions. Pero nung nalaman ko na pwede siya gamitin sa chem, okay siya. Okay, so ganun lang. You can use fractions para mas madali. Again, paano, paano mo malalaman kung anong fraction gagamitin mo? Yung, dis, yung gusto mong number of atoms, yun yung sa numerator. Yung gusto mo i-cancel, yun yung sa denominator. O kunwari, di ba 2 yan? Gusto mo gawin 13. That means 13 sa numerator, yung 2 sa denominator. Para mag-cancel sila. Okay? So the balance equation is... Ito. So, the balance equation is this one. C4H10 plus 13 halves O2 producing 4 CO2 and 5 water. Ano yung sabi ko kanina? Pag fraction yan, kailangan mo pa rin yung gawing integer. No? Gawin, gagawin mo siyang whole number at the end. Paano? You multiply the equation by the denominator. Or yung denominator ng fraction. So that means I will multiply the entire equation by 2. So I will get the final equation talaga as this. 2CH, uh, C4H10 plus 13 oxygen producing 8CO2 and 10 water. Lahat yan ay balanced. Ayun. So again, kapag combustion, you balance the carbons first, hydrogens next, last si oxygen. Okay? So yun yung typical flow natin. O last one. Malapit na tayo matapos. Na. So for the last one, eto. Sabi dun sa slides kanina, dun sa nasa outlook natin, if you have a polyatomic ion, treat them as one unit. Kasi if you balance them atom per atom, matatagal lang ka. Ganun kasi ginagawa ko nung ako ay high school. Kaya hate na hate ko yung balancing. No? Pero lately ko nalaman, nag-college na ako, na pwede mo pala i-shortcut yon. When you see polyatomic ions, you treat them as one unit. Iba-balance mo siya as a whole. Okay? So, tignan natin to. We have sodium sulfite with phosphoric acid, no, reacting with phosphoric acid to produce uh, sulfuric acid, uh, sulfurous acid, sorry. So, the sulfurous acid and sodium phosphate. So, again, uh, our reaction ay sodium sulfite plus phosphoric acid producing sulfurous acid and sodium phosphate. Pag ganito yung problem, ang daming atoms, as in, tignan mo, ang daming nakalagay na atoms, check mo kung may polyatomic ions ka. 
So, kailangan kabisado nyo na yung polyatomic ions, yung nitrate, phosphate, chlorate, carbonates, bicarbonates, etc. Don't worry, may listahan naman yan. Nasa, ano yan, sa lecture PowerPoint. Okay. So, last year kami gumawa na itong mga PowerPoint na ito. Okay. So, yan. So, check nyo yung, ano na yan, yung mga polyatomic ions na yan. So, once na ma-recognize mo sila ay polyatomic ions, lagyan mo ng parenthesis. So, itong SO3, sulfite ion, lalagyan ko parenthesis. Phosphate ion, lalagyan ko parenthesis. Sulfite ion and phosphate ion. Bilangin mo. Uh, bilangin mo kung ilang sulfite ion at ilang phosphate ion meron sa reactant pati sa product. Ititreat mo siya as one whole unit. Isang buong unit mo siya ititreat. Okay? So, for example, dito sa left side, may isang sulfite ion. On the right side, may isang sulfite ion. Ibig sabihin nun, balance na yung sulfite. So, hindi ko na siya papakilaman. Ang gagawin ko ay, ibublur ko siya. Actually, tinatakpan ko yan talaga nung bata pa ako. Para hindi ko na siya galawin. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, wala na akong gagawin yan. Wala, wala na akong pake. Kasi, balance na siya eh. May isang sulfite ion sa left, may isang sulfite ion sa right. How about phosphate ion, PO4? May isa kong PO4 sa left, may isa rin akong PO4 sa right. Paano ko nalaman kapag isang PO4? Yung, par yung parenthesis mo, walang subscript sa labas. Pag walang subscript yun sa labas, ibig sabihin yun, one unit lang yan. Kasi minsan mamaya may makikita kayo, may two sa labas, ibig sabihin, dalawang phosphate meron ka. But in our case, isa lang. So, isang PO4 dito, Kasi wala nakalagay sa parenthesis. Doon din. Wala rin nakalagay doon. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, tig isang unit ng phosphate yan. Balance na yung phosphate. Ano gagawin ko? Tatakpan ko yan. Pinipensil ko yan. So, yung natirang atoms, yun na lang ibabalance ko. Okay? So, yung sodium, pati hydrogen, yun na lang ibabalance ko. Di ba? Mas madali. Mas na-simplify ko yung aking problem. No? Instead na ang dami kong atoms na ibabalance, yung sodium pati hydrogen na lang ibabalance ko. No? So, balance natin. Sodium, dalawa sa left, tatlo sa right. Para yan ay maging balance, I will multiply yung nasa ref. Ah, nasa ref tuloy. <laughs> Gutom na. I multiply ko yung nasa left by 3 para maging 6 yung sodium dyan. And yun sa right side, multiply ko sa 2 para maging 6 din yung sodium sa right side. O, balance na yung sodium ko. How about hydrogen? May tatlo sa left side, dalawa sa right side. Ano yung greatest common factor nila? 6, no? So, that's just 2, two, uh, two times 3. So, multiply ko yung nasa left by 2 para maging 6 yung hydrogen. And yun sa right side, multiply ko by 3 para... 6 na rin yung hydrogen. Since balance na yung sodium, pati yung hydrogen, that means the entire equation is already balanced. O, pwede ko na tanggalin yung takip ng sulfite pati ng phosphate. So, the coefficients of the balance equation is 3, 2, 3, 2. Okay. Ayan. So, balance na yan. If you count the atoms, may kita mo, oy balance na nga rin sila, no? Check nyo yan, balance na lahat. No? So, ganun yung purpose kapag polyatomic ion. You treat them as one unit. Pag sila i-balance na, takpan mo. Para yung matirang atoms, yun na lang yung i-balance mo. Okay? So, magbibigay pa kong isang example about this. No? Kasi I know this is something new for most of you. So, itong ano na to, itong activity na to, is actually, sasagutan nyo to no? after the session. Uh, upload ko yung answers by next meeting. Actually, may answers na pala to sa PowerPoint, no? Nilagay ko na to dati sa PowerPoint, yung answers. May ano nangyari. Eto. Kung bubuksan nyo yung PowerPoint, buksan nyo yung notes. Ayan, ako yung nag-type ng answers dito, eh. So, yun. So, pwede practice nyo muna before you answer this, no? Bigyan ko pa kayo ng example ng polyatomic ions kasi I know bago to sa karamihan sa inyo. 
Um, let's have number five. Let me rewrite it now. Try natin i-balance to. So, ang daming atoms. Ano yung mga atoms ko? Aluminum, hydrogen, sulfur, pati oxygen. Uh, pag marami ng atoms, you check if may polyatomic ions ka. Baka meron. So, what are the polyatomic ions that can be observed here? Yun yung SO4. Sulfate na polyatomic ion. So, sa left side, meron akong SO4 na nakikita. Lalagyan ko yun ng parenthesis. Ano subscript niyan? Since wala na kalagay, yan ay isa. So I have one SO4 unit here. Isang SO4 unit sa left. Pagdating sa right side, oh, may parenthesis na yung SO4. Highlight ko yung parenthesis. Ayan. Ano yung subscript niya doon? Tatlo. Oh, ito yung problema. Hindi balance yung aking polyatomic ions. No? So, ang gagawin ko, para mabalance ko yan, para mabalance ko yung buong equation, uunahin ko yung polyatomic ions. No? So, may tatlo sa right side na SO4, sa left side, isa lang. Okay? Ano gagawin ko? So, ang gagawin ko ay, imumultiply ko yung formula na may, ano, so, SO4 sa left by 3. So, imumultiply ko siya by 3. Again, hindi ko ilalagay yung subscript na 3. Bawal yon. Bawal maglagay ng co ano, nag-subscript. Coefficients lang pwede. So, kung 3 yung SO4 ko dito sa right side, indicated by the subscript, kailangan tatlo din yung SO4 ko dito sa left side. Okay? By coefficients naman. Okay? Hindi pwede subscript plan mo to. Bawal yun. Mali ka na agad dun. So, lagay mo lang coefficient pag ibabalance mo. So, yan. Na times 3 ko na yung sulfate. So, okay na ako. Ano na gagawin ko? Tatakpan ko na yung sulfate. Okay. Takpan ko na yan. Oh, well, hindi ko na siya nakikita kunwari. Ano na lang natitirang ibabalance ko? Yung aluminum hydrogen. Yun na lang yung ibabalance ko. Oh, let's start with aluminum. Oh, yung aluminum, may dalawa sa right side, isa sa left side. So, I have to multiply aluminum by 2 para tig 2 sila, left side, right side, para silang dalawa. Balance na. How about hydrogen gas? May anim akong hydrogen sa left. That's 3 times 2, 3 times the subscript. 3 times 2, anim. Sa right side, dalawa lang. So, gusto ko gawin 6 din yon para equal. So, I can multiply the right side H2 by 3. So, balance na yung aluminum, balance na yung hydrogen gas, and at the same time, balance na yung sulfate. The equation is now already balanced. So, the final form is 2 aluminum plus 3 H2SO4, producing Al2SO4, plus 3H2. Ganun lang ka-easy. Hindi na yung katulad nung high school na, nililist, na nililista nyo yung lahat ng elements, iisa-isahin nyo siya, no. no? Kasi pag college, kailangan may techniques na tayo, no. So, ano yung mga techniques na na-share ko sa inyo? Pwede gumamit ng fraction. Kunwari, gusto nyo add number yung ating num ano add number yung dami ng atoms. So, you can use fraction. Second tip, yun sa balancing ng combustion. You start balancing carbons first, hydrogen next, oxygen last. And then lastly, kapag may polyatomic ions ka, i-balance mo muna yung polyatomic ions. Once na na-balance mo na siya, takpan mo sila, and then you balance the other atoms. Okay? 
after balancing the other atoms, everything is now balanced. Okay? So, lahat ay balance na. Now, if you want to confirm, bilangin natin yung aluminum, hydrogen, sulfur, pati oxygen. oxygen. Kung gusto nyo ma-confirm. So, for the reactants, reactant side, I have two aluminum. On the product side, I have two aluminum then. On the reactant side, I have three times two hydrogen. So, that is six. On the product side, I have three times two as well. Which is also equal to six. O in sulfur, that's three times one. So, that is 3. O dito, yung subscript times the sulfur. That's 3 times 1 as well. That's also equal to 6. Ay, 6 tuloy. 3 pala. 3 times 1. Eh. And lastly, yung oxygen. 3 times 4. Okay? May subscript yung oxygen na form. So, that will be 12. O dito naman sa right side, ganun din. 4 times 3. Is also 12. As you can see, once you were able to balance the polyatomic ions, mas, mas mapapadali yung balancing ng iba. Okay. Uh, you balance aluminum and hydrogen. After nun, tapos na. Okay. So that's how to make, uh, that's how we make uh, balancing reaction much more easy, no? By recognizing some patterns. So, ano mga pwede natin gawin when balancing formulas? Use fraction. Kung ayaw nyo, okay lang. Pero, mas maganda kung sanay tayo sa fractions. No? Mas mabilis tayo makapag-isip ng number. So, use fraction. Second one, balance combustion reaction with the following sequence. Balance mo yung carbon. Next is hydrogen. Last si oxygen. And then lastly, for polyatomic ions, you balance them first. Then the remaining atoms are to be balanced as well. No? Mas madali na magbalance ng remaining atoms kasi onti na lang sila. Okay. So, that, no? so that will be all for our session today. So yan. So um, by the way, uh, may sagot na to. No? May sagot na itong PowerPoint na to. Paki-download na lang. Uh, nandun yun sa ano. Nandito yung sa ating modules dito. Um, medyo nagulo lang ako sa naming system nila. Okay. Ito. So, nandito yung ating ano. Uh, ito. Ito yung ginamit ko kanina yung PDF. Ito yung PowerPoint. You can, you can start downloading this. Uh, may bosses ko to last year. So, iba yung bosses ko dati sa ngayon. Okay. So, pwede nyo i-download yan. Tapos pakinggan nyo na lang uli yung sinasabi ko doon. So, also included dyan sa PowerPoint na to ay, ay, ba't ko binuksan yung Zoom? Included dyan sa PowerPoint na yan ay yung answers na. Pag binuksan nyo yung PowerPoint, you click yung notes, nalabas yung sagot sa gilid. Same thing as dito. Okay. So, yan. So, ganun. So, next meeting, we will start with stoichiometry. We will accomplish everything that's included here. Madali lang naman yung stoichiometry. Puro formula nga lang. Okay? So, puro calculations. Pero don't worry, easy lang yan. Okay? So, we will do that next meeting. Uh, for now, we're done sa session natin. So, ano yung na-cover natin? Types of chemical reactions. Ang dilim na. So, na-cover natin types of chemical reactions, um, yung activity series, kung sino yung mga metals na unang magre-react, sino yung hindi magre-react. No? So, yung nasa taas ng table, sila yung magre-react agad, yung nasa baba, sila yung hindi agad magre-react. No? And then, um, how to convert equations, uh, how to convert words from e to equations, no? Yung work sentences, paano i-convert siya to chemical equations. Na kwentuhan na rin natin yon Hopefully, na-discuss na yung ano, nomenclature. Kasi needed yon And also yung uh, balancing equations. No? So, by next meeting, we will cover stoichiometry. And matatapos natin yung next meeting. So, uh, I'll see you there na. See you on Friday ulit. No? So, for now, uh, 
let's call this a day. No? So thank you for attending our session. And good luck sa ongoing quiz, ano, ongoing quiz 3. No? So that will end bukas. So good luck. And I'll see you again this Friday. So ingat and bye-bye. Stay safe po. Um, yung kabi ng class na to, yung recording upload ko buka. Uh, mamaya pala. Upload ko na to mamaya para makapag-review na kayo. Okay, so bye-bye. Ingat.